The next step is doing this through the UI. Um, so basically what I want to show is how you can send messages from the UI uh, and into the game world. Uh, and it actually works exactly the same as, uh, as uh, some of the methods uh, we've been seeing. So I'm going to make a user interface here, uh, a widget blueprint. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, BP on screen widget. Uh, I'm going to open this up. Uh, I'm going to make a canvas panel as the root. And I'm just going to make a button here. And I'm going to add some text into this button. And I'm going to say that the button is supposed to be like this. And I'm going to anchor it here. Remove this because this is just confusing. And then we put the alignment here on this one. And then we give it a little bit of a... a Offset here. So uh, we have a uh, do the padding a little bit better. Okay, so here. So uh, I'm going to do a button uh, and I'm going to call it bounce all balls. Now we have a button here that's called bounce all the balls. And I'm picking the, the button uh, kind of uh, widget here and I'm going to add an on click event. And I'm just going to go into print string here and do. Please bounce all. Okay. So uh, now all we have to do is we have to add this UI to the screen, and there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do it in the level blueprint. I go into this drop down here and I open up the level blueprint. Uh, I'm going to add begin play to the level blueprint. I call create widget, which is going to make the widget. Uh, kind of create the widget object for me and I call this BP on screen widget and then this is going to return an on screen widget object so this is very similar to uh, what we were doing before and I'm basically just making the uh, adding the widget to the screen now and I'm going to call add to viewport so on begin play whenever the level loads uh, we make an instance of this uh, screen widget and we add it to the viewport so now that we press play you can see that I have a button here called bounce all the balls uh, and it's printing out uh, printing out things and the, the old logic is still here. OK, so uh, what you can do is, uh, is very you can do the same thing as before. You can just do get all actors of class. And you select BP underscore bouncing ball, you can loop through the list and this is something that we looked at before and we can do uh do jump here do the jump and we plug this in here uh so we've seen this before and this is so this is very very simple and similar so now if i press bounce all of the balls you can see that all of them bounce and uh maybe to make this a little bit more interesting we can make another uh, another variable here and we can say uh can jump through UI and we set this to false so and we set this to instance editable so you have to set it to instance editables uh, editable so that you can uh, you can change this on the instances in the editor here so now uh, we do this a little bit differently because we had a uh, we had a flag here that called nobody tells me uh, when to jump and we had two set like that uh, and we can say here that only this one, this one, and this one has the can jump through the UI. So we just mark it like that. So I'm going to save. And then here on the screen, uh, just like we did before, I can say can jump through the UI. And I press B and click and I get a branch. So we ask the question here, if can jump through the UI is set to true, uh, we do it. Otherwise, we don't do anything. So this is just another way of uh, uh, of filtering like we were doing before. So only these three here have this flag set. So when I press play and I press jump all the balls, uh, only these three get jumped. So we should probably go in and into the designer and uh, call this make the marked balls jump. So, uh, so yeah. All right, so now I can walk around here. These ones get jumped uh, up and down and get my mouse here and I can make these jump. So uh, so now I'm sending all sorts of messages telling the balls to jump in, in all sorts of ways. 
Uh, so, uh, so yeah, this is the, the case when we do this just directly through the UI. The next step is doing this through the mouse click. Um, and to be able to do that, I'm going to make a couple of uh, small changes here to the project. Uh, so I want to use the, I want to use the, uh, uh, let's see if we can do this through the uh, third person character. Normally what I would do is I would do this in the, uh, I would do this in the uh, player controller, but uh, in the default example, the player controller is not blueprint uh, kind of created as a blueprint. So let's see if we can do it here. So first we want to get the uh, kind of where we want to understand uh, what is under the, the mouse cursor. So I'm going to go and just add a tick event. Here we go. Uh, on the pawn, on the third person character here, I'm going to call get uh, under uh, get mouse get cursor. Ah, so I have to do get controller. Yeah, so this is why uh, this is done on the uh, uh, on the pawn. So I need to get a reference to the player controller. Uh, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about how the pawn and the player controller kind of interact. I think that it is a subject for another video. But uh, uh, basically, I need to get a reference to the uh, to the player controller. So I'm going to get the controller cast to cast to player controller here. And uh, I know that this is always for our test. I know this is always going to be, uh, can I turn this into a pure cast here? I know this is always going to be true, so I'm not checking it. So here I'm going to do get under, get hit result under cursor uh, for objects here. All right. So this is a note that uh, allows me to get the hit results under the cursor for objects. Uh, the object types is something that you have to put in. So I'm going to do make array uh, and I'm going to look for world dynamic because uh, the thing that we're going to be picking, the bouncing ball, has a dynamic uh, kind of collision preset. preset. So uh, probably. So we'll, we'll just test this out and see, see if it works. So uh, world dynamic and then I'm going to go here and if uh, I find something, I'm going to get the hit results and this is a structure so I can do break. I can also just right click on it and do split, but I, I don't like this. I, uh, I like to drag out here and do break. Uh, so and here uh, we should get a hit actor and this is very similar to the overlap itself. So I need to get the controller. Uh, I need to get the uh, cast that to the player controller and uh, I need to get the information that's inside of it, the hit result and then the hit actor itself. Uh, I'm just going to print the name of the hit actor here. And let's see how this is going to go. Okay, so you can see that it's uh, printing out on the third person character, but it's not printing out on the uh, on the sphere itself. So this means that uh, the bouncing ball, we need to add, uh, see if we can change the collision to be uh, block all dynamic instead of uh, instead of what we have. So it's block all dynamic is here. What I'm worried about is that the physics are not going to run correctly. Yeah, okay, so this is correct. Uh, this is still correct. And the, uh, but I'm not getting anything. Uh, yeah, okay. So the problem here is that I, I don't see the mouse. So I can also go here under my player uh, and under begin. I can do this on the tick, it doesn't really matter. I can do show mouse cursor. So this is gonna show the mouse cursor. Uh, this does not have to be done every tick, but it's uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, here we go. So now that I play, I see the mouse cursor all the time. And uh, basically what's happening is uh, now, any time that I go into the overlap volume that we have, you can see that uh, this is pretty close to the. So the reason why we're getting the character so uh, at such a big range is because we added a volume around the character and that's being picked up. Uh, so let's make this a little bit smaller here. So the balls are only going to bounce if they are really, really close to the uh, to the character. So let's see if this works here. Here we go. Yep, this is fine. So now the ball actually jumps uh, at a much kind of lower, uh, closer range, and we're getting the the overlap kind of printouts here on the uh, whenever the mouse goes over a button. Okay, so 
the important thing to do here now is uh, now we made this logic we on every single tick we uh, make sure that we show the mouse cursor we get the hit results under the uh, actor and we cast it to uh, we don't cast it yet we're just printing it up but just like we did before we need to take the hit actor the hit actor is uh, it is a uh, 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 the hit actor is uh, uh, just an actor so we need to cast to uh, bp underscore bouncing ball and if there is a hit under here and it is a bouncing ball we can do to the jump and this is going to be pretty interesting because now when we press play we are shooting them way up into the sky because this is happening on tick and our goal was to do this on the uh, uh was uh, to do this on click so i just did this on tech while i was testing this so now what i can do is i can make another event here in the uh, uh i can do it on the pawn and i'm gonna call it uh, left no right mouse button here and i'm just gonna print so anytime that we press the right mouse button i'm gonna say click here we go Yeah, so, yeah, click <laughs> yeah, the right mouse button, not the left mouse button. Now let's do it on the left mouse button then. It's more, I thought I was using it for something else. So it works the same way. Left mouse button here. Uh, here we go. And we get the click. So let's just double check that this works. Uh, click, 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 click. Cool. So now instead of doing this here on the tick, uh, we can... Uh, we can leave the logic here, the show mouse cursor logic. And I'm going to take all of this, uh, this logic here. I'm going to unplug it from here. And I'm just going to say that whenever we click, uh, and I'm just going to clean this up a tiny bit. Here we go. We move this down here. So whenever we click the button, we say, okay, so you just click the button, what's under the uh, cursor? If there is something under the cursor, uh, we say is what's under the cur cursor, it's some sort of an actor. And if that actor is the bouncing ball, then we call do the jump on that uh, actor, the one that we uh, we actually selected. So uh, let's go here. And now that I click this, you can see that uh, I can click on each one of them and make them make them jump. So this one goes up. So here you can see that I'm sending a message from the mouse uh, and through the mouse click, uh, the mouse figures out what actor is under uh, under the cursor. Uh, we figure out if this is the right type of actor and then we send the message into that uh, that actor.